Yep, so my name is Andrea Aime, I work for GeoSolutions. Uh, we um, have a growing team uh, uh, both in Italy and the US, and we support, among the other things, GeoServer. Um, so a bit of history of OGC APIs. At the beginning, we didn't talk about OGC APIs, we were talking about WFS3. Uh, that was, uh, was born around 2017. It has been developed as a standard uh, in a private report for a for a, uh, a bunch of time, and then we had a, uh, a bunch of public events such as the WFS3 Hackathon, Testbed 14, the Vectortize Pilot, and Testbed 15, which eventually ended up in the API Hackathon London when we actually switched from talking about WFS3 to OGC API features and introduced all the other OGC API something. So. Uh, features, coverages, maps, processes, catalogs, styles, and there are more. All uh, underpinning uh, the same OGC API commons. Uh, the development of the, the standards um, has happened uh, in uh, working groups, but also through sprints, periodic code sprints. You have a, a long list here of these uh, sprints. Each sprint typically covers uh, a few of the standards, not all of them, uh, to give it some focus. And Geosolution has participated uh, to a bunch of them to prepare draft implementation of a variety of protocols. Uh, we are now in 2022. Uh, what do we have in terms of the releases? We have OGC API Features Core and uh, its extension uh, part one called CRS by reference. We have OGC API Environmental Data Retrieval and OGC API Processes. This one has been released. They are specifications you can count on. They are, uh, let's say, casting stone. When you say OGC API features version 1.0, you know what you're talking about. The other APIs are still in draft stage and changing over time. And uh, uh, the evolution is rapid. Uh, it's kind of difficult to keep up unless you are deeply involved into it. OK, so what are the common elements of OGC APIs? Well, first of all, um, uh, an open API definition, uh, RESTful uh, orientation, so you have resources, there are presentations, and HTTP methods that go with them to do things on, on the resources. Um, OGC API common can be found in this repository. It really just defines the notion of a landing page, which is sort of your equivalent of a capabilities document, more or less. Uh, it's just a bunch of links to the, all the other resources, including the conformance classes, which is a list of what that server can do, it, which is very, very important in OGC API services because you have a very small core that can do just the minimum, and then you have a bunch of extensions telling you, yeah, I can support JSON, and I can support HTML, and I can do filtering, and I can do CRS, and so on, whilst the core is really, really simple, and we are going to see an example about it. Um, with uh, uh, OGC API features. Uh, links, links everywhere. All the resources in OGC API are linking to each other, so the collection is pointing to the items, the items might be pointing back to the collection, and so on. Um, resource orientation, all the resources have uh, a bunch of uh, uh, representations. There is no mandated uh, representation as far as I remember. Typically you have JSON, oftentimes you have HTML, you could have all other representations such as XML or uh, GML. Um, how do you choose the representation you want? Typical HTTP uh, standards, so the accept header if you, if you so want to use it, or you could roll out a custom query parameter. F is a common choice, but it's not part of the standard. You can use whatever you want. Um, as I said, the core is tiny. It has the bare minimum, bare minimum functionality, and there are a lot of extensions uh, to support the extra bits. So let's have a look at uh, OGC API features core. Uh, this uh, service provides, actually this building block, uh, provides access to uh, vector data. So you have collections, and inside the collections you have items, and you can also refer each item uh, in individually. Uh, the core only supports the CRS84 or CRS84 with height. That's it. It doesn't support any other coordinate reference system. When you hit a core implementation and you don't specify anything, you can ass be assured that, that you're going to get back data in CRS84. Uh, unlike WFS, it's schema-less, so schema is not required. You could be getting back data uh, whose structure changes item by item. Oh, although you can, you can have a schema if you want to. 
It has uh, an open API definition with uh, the elements that I already talked about. Um, when you try to fetch items, all you can do is to filter them by bounding box or by daytime. That's it. Space and time. These are the built-in uh, query uh, that you can do. Uh, some implementations, this is optional, might give you uh, the option to uh, filter some property by equality, and that's all you can do. Um, if the dataset return is large, there's paging built-in. It's based on links, not on offsets like in WFS, like in older versions of uh, WFS. So you fetch your first page, it has links to the next page, and so on, and so on. And that's all. That's all Core does. So uh, one of the, let's say, features of OGC API features is that it's pretty simple to implement. You can literally implement in days if you are targeting just core. But what about everything else? Querying, transaction, reprojection, uh, property selection, and so on. Where are they? They are extensions. So OGC API features part two is CRS by, by reference. It adds a support for different CRSs other than WGS84. It allows to describe the native CRS. It allows you to uh, reproject on the fly. It allows you to uh, do uh, bounding box queries in other CRSs. The server is implementing an older draft of uh, this CRS by reference, and we are looking forward to get uh, uh, resourcing or funding to align to the final version. Part three, filtering, is still a draft. Mind, this is not uh, released. It adds the notion of queryables, which are properties that you can use for filtering. Typically, they are the attributes that you have in your dataset. It might be not all of them, but you are not limited to them. You can also use properties that do not show up in, in the attributes, like any text, for example. And then you have the notion of having a filter specification, along with an uh, indication of which language has been used to specify the filter. Languages are pluggable, and you can uh, decide to use whatever you want. Uh, and there is a specification called SQL2, I'm going to talk about it in, in a moment, but uh, GeoServer also supports eSQL, which is our own flavor of the old uh, CSW SQL. Uh, SQL2 encoding is an evolution of that old SQL for, uh, from uh, CSW. It can be SQL2 text, and it reads more or less like a SQL um, where close, but it can also be expressed as JSON, which is handy if you are sticking your filter in a larger JSON request. Um, uh, over time, we tried to keep up with the evolution. SQL, initially it was uh, the SQL that the GeoServer offered, more or less. Then came SQL 2 with changes, and it keeps on being changed, changing uh, up to date. We are probably a month or two behind in terms of uh, our implementation. Sorting is not part of uh, OGC API features. It's part of the proposals, which means they are not being al allocated to an extension yet. Uh, the, the syntax is uh, uh, coming from OGC API records, and it's pretty simple. You sort here by name ascending and date of birth descending. Property selection is also not yet part of OGC API features. It's part of proposals. We are talking here about returnables, which are the pre mm, properties that you can decide not to include in the output. Um, uh, personally, I like the uh, OGC, API, uh, OGC API stack implementation uh, of this concept, which only lists properties, and if you don't want the properties, you add a minus sign in front of it. Um, there is also uh, uh, a part for draft for uh, simple transactions, where you can just do create, update, replace, and delete on the items, on the single items, but there is also some thought about must changes if you need to. Okay, so let's have a look quickly at the OGC API features HTML representation. This is the landing page as an HTML, which links to other, uh, all the other bits, uh, the uh, API definition, the list of collections. For each collection, we have title, description, extent, and uh, links to queryables and items. The single collection uh, then, uh, well, brings me to the queryables if I need to. It brings me to the items, which are paged through HTML pages. Of course, you can ask for the GeoJSON representation instead, but also GML, but also CSV, and whatever else you want. And that's it. Um, let's switch to coverages. OGC API coverages is kind of the simplest WCS ever. Um, 
if you thought that the WCS 2.0 was simple when, well, this is pretty similar and maybe simpler, um, the GeoServer implementation of it is incomplete. Uh, when uh, you want to describe um, um, a coverage, you typically put together a domain set, a range type, a range set, and a metadata. So basically, it's descri description of the spatial domain, of your bands, uh, whatever metadata you want, and then finally you get the data. When you put them all together, you have a coverage. And in coverage uh, API, you have a separate resource for the four bits, but you can also get all of them together in a single file like a GFF. Uh, you can do coverage extraction, again, by bounding box and time. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, GeoServer implementation, uh, we are still missing um, uh, some bits like the description of the bands, uh, support for scaling, and support for coverage tiles. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, some of you might step up and complete the implementation or provide funding to do so. Maps. Uh, Maps is the replacement for WMS. It's a simpler WMS, in fact. Uh, you have uh, collections. Oh, it's also, again, a building block. So uh, you can attach maps to whatever. You could attach it to a WPS output, for example, or uh, a collection, or a raster, or whatever kind of resource. In GeoServer, it's implemented as a, an equivalent of WMS. Um, so collections, in this case, have styles. Then they have map. And uh, uh, interesting, uh, the, the map resource, you can just say, OK, give me a map of that layer without any parameter, and it's going to work. And then optionally, you can define a bounding box, the weight and the height, the, the output format, and so on. So it, uh, it looks a lot like the GeoServer WMS reflect, uh, reflector that we have had for like uh, the past 20 years. Um, GeoServer also implements an info resource for to do get feature info. There is some discussion about having this or not in the core of OGC API maps. It's probably not going to be there. But in fact, if you look at the WMS specification, it also says that feature info is optional. So nothing new. Uh, when it comes to tiles, we have OGC API tiles, which is the successor of WMTS. And uh, you have, as resources, the usual suspects. So the tile matrix sets, and then for each and uh, every, and every layer, the tiles. Um, again, it's a building block. You can tile anything. So you, we can tile a collection, we, but we can also tile a map. But we can also tile data and get vector tiles. Or we can tile coverages and get uh, raster tiles. Um, the tile resources typically go uh, and provide you with a URL template that you can then fill in uh, X, Y, and Z, but, uh, basically. They are just called tile matrix, tile row, and tile hole instead. Um, they have a metadata resource which can be implemented, and in GeoServer it is implemented as a tile JSON, which allows to, for better integration with the Mapbox uh, clients. Um, this is new. Uh, OGC, a classic OGC service did not have a style service. So there is this draft API, which is called styles, which allows you to discover and interact with uh, the styles uh, stored in uh, GeoServer. Uh, so we can uh, expose all the styles, list them, uh, download them, eventually transform them on the fly. Maybe you have a GeoCSS style, but you want it in SLD. You can download it as such. Uh, we have a, a bunch of style metadata. Uh, describing what the style does and which layers uh, it's linked to, but also, interestingly, the list of attributes that it actually needs to work. So some styles do not need any attribute, and they can be used against any layer of the uh, proper geometry type, but other need labels. They need um, other attributes, uh, thematic maps, and stuff like that. And we have a des uh, description of which attributes are needed. Then, uh, during Testbed 15, we have extended Map Store to be a client of this uh, API. We, we have it as a prototype. It's not part of the, um, of the core implementation of Map Store, but it's, it's interesting that it's there. And uh, so we have uh, this point and click style editor that can then use the Styles API to retrieve styles, but then also to save them back for usage in GeoServer. Um, the main use case for a styles API is actually some sort of vector tiles or coverage, coverage tiles, because you can have your raw data pointing at the styles that can be used on the client side for uh, rendering it. And uh, there are more, uh, more APIs, of course. So uh, in GeoServer, we have a, a, 
a decent implementation of the, the Stack API. It's pretty complete, but we also have a prototype implementation of a DGGS API with uh, also a DAP API, a data access and processing API. We have a prototype of an Images API, which is sort of a mo image mosaic management API. Uh, there are also APIs which are not supported, but they could, such as records, so the equivalent of CSW, processes, which is the equivalent of WPS, routes, which is a specific uh, implementation of a WPS designed for routing, and environment uh, data retrieval, which is a sort of a sibling to OGC API features, but with more uh, features um, specific to environment and data retrieval. And this is it. Thank you.